Send it to my main homepage. Okay, so let's run this now. And as you can see, we have no representation, nothing came up, but we still have the ability to troubleshoot our subroutine over here. Now, the cool thing of this is that the file sizes are kept very small. Now, do you, you're probably already seeing a bit of a problem here, okay? Right now, there's a few problems here. First of all, um, when you do the include, it must be a UBOT file. It cannot be a compiled executable, okay? Even after that you've compiled the robot here, let me just double click on this. Oh, sorry, I did make some changes there. Let's go back here and recompile this. Okay, you can see that I have actually included the dot UBOT file, okay? Let me just compile this for you. It'll just take a minute here. Once it's completely compiled this file, uh, it will be looking for this file when you run the program. Now, as you can see, I've done exact path names and that. When you actually create your file, you're going to want to avoid this. You're going to want to be able to point to it um, within the file itself. So maybe it's in the same directory or within a subdirectory of the directory, and you get rid of the rest of this path. Okay. So, I'm going to run that file now, and I'm just going to run it. And as you can see, it goes to the subroutine and pulls it up. Okay, now, can you see what the problem is here? Is that you have a UBOT file. Now, if you sell a robot to somebody, and they see this UBOT, they're going to go, hmm, gee, I wonder what this is all about. You know, They might not know anything, but you know, I believe in being able to, to um, protect a robot, your robots inside and out. Now I've come across a really simple and kind of neat way to obscure that ability of anybody to see what your robots are. What I do is I just change it to a .dll. Now the cool thing is with the latest version of uh, UBOT here it seems not to mind this. It used to be it, it really did mind this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the main robot here I'm going to right click. Now when you actually put this include statement in, here I'm going to show you. When you browse for the file, you have to browse. I'm going to say that I'm just going to try that, okay? Don't like it. Because it doesn't understand what a DLL is, okay? It wants to see a UBOT file. Okay? But now what you can do after you've added that statement is you can actually, when you're ready to compile, you can say insert string. Now what that allows you to do is it allows you to change, just go to the end, the string of the file that you're accessing. Now remember the only thing we've done is just changed the extension of the file name, okay? And that's just hunky dory perfect. So I'm going to save this robot, I'm going to open it up, make sure it's happy with that. Okay, it's not going to fuss. We can run it. And it runs just perfectly. Now, remember, like I said, this is just a file extension change. It's still your uh, UBOT file. Okay, see this one here and this one here? They're identical files. But you've put a very strong layer of obscurity behind it. Now, nobody knows that it was previously, previously a UBOT file. They'd actually have to do a little bit of digging to figure that out, okay? It's a neat way to obscure. You guys know about it, so you probably come across and, you know, if I had a robot out there, would be able to pull it apart. But um, for the sake of uh, just about everybody else on the planet, it's going to be considered like an executable. Now, the nice thing is, this file's still very small. It's not two and a half megs. It's only a couple K. You can actually put it underneath, let's say, a support apps folder and call it from there as a DLL, you know, it's really up to you. Now remember, if you have to edit it, you're going to have to edit the .ubot, delete this file, and copy it and create a new one. So it is a little bit of finicky, but you know something? It, that's fine. It works great. So there you go.
that's how you split up and create the flow between a uh, two different programs here. So let's just take a look here. So we had the uh, subroutine file that we created. Now the subroutine doesn't contain anything that uh, we don't want to see in the main program, but it does contain the smarts on the outside to provide the variables and to also return variables to us so we can see what's going on. In this particular instance, I actually just set a return variable. You can actually show variables within the subroutine as well. Let's say you want to see when it uh, strikes a position. You can use a JavaScript box to pop it open saying, OK, this is successful. It's really up to you how, do you how you do it. But the nice thing is when you actually go to the main program, that's all hidden and it's all obscured. And that's just fantastic. So there you go. There's a good quick tutorial for you there to show you how you can do this and I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, this is Frank Thomas once again from www.ubotjunkie.com I hope to uh, provide you with more tutorials in the future. Make sure you pop on over to my website and see what I've got cooking today. I do keep a category of tutorials. As you can see at this time you know, there's stuff on UBOT 3, updating, uh, learning UBOT, some basics. So pop on over. www.ubotjunkie.com. This is Frank Thomas. Thanks very much.